Did you get any rest last night? Not much. I coughed a lot. <laughs> but when I did sleep, I had some strange dreams. Do you remember any of them? They were very strange. They were short and mostly about your father. I don't have enough memories of him to even have a short dream. I feel guilty that I've watched you grow up, getting to see things your father never got to see, never got to be a part of. I blamed him for something that was not his fault. Not his fault. He left us. No, the man who left us wasn't your father, nor my husband. Did you like a drink? <laughs> no, thank you. This man that left us, who was he? If ever there was a victim of circumstances, it was your father. How's that? He was the kindest, most compassionate person I've ever known. He was so gentle. The old saying, love at first sight, that was so true for us. I couldn't think of anything else. We were so happy, everything was so right. I didn't think things would ever change. But then he was called off to war. This is wild, you telling me all this. Why are you doing this now? I'm just doing something that I should have done a long time ago. I stayed quiet out of fear. Maybe a fear of losing you. Having to share you. I was wrong and I blamed your father when I should have thanked him. He gave me the greatest gift of my life and that was you. Do you know why he left? Was it me? I never knew why he left, but it certainly wasn't you. He adored you. I became so depressed, thinking only of myself. I never gave any thought to what he might be going through. Your father got into the war late. Most of the fighting was over. He got there just in time for the death camps the death chambers. He saw the bodies piled up in the train cars. I don't think he was ever again the same. Did he ever talk about it? He never wanted to talk about it. I could see how tormented he was. He was the type of person, son, that would never even hurt a fly. He used to say that everything had the same right to live that he did. Some people are programmed to be warriors, but not your father. And you're so much like him. Are you okay? I'm okay. I love you. And I love you, too. Uh, I'll send Velda up to check on you in a minute. Okay, son. Does she need anything? She seems awful tired and she's coughing a lot. I'm going to be gone for a little bit. Could you check see if she, she'll get her, get her to eat something? And uh, we just had this conversation about my father. Your father? That's good. Are you all right? I, I'll try to get her to eat something, but w what did she say about your father, if you don't mind me asking? So you're like a co-conspirator. We just pop the top off. We're going to look inside next time. Hey, Tex. Tex. Hey. How's your foot, Jeff? Uh, uh, just trying to hold on to it. Didn't make much doing that. Some days, depends on the kindness of strangers. Much like Blanche Dubois in Streetcar. Blanche Dubois? Streetcar? What the hell? A streetcar named Desire. Tennessee Williams, Marlon Brando. Did our grand educational system fail you? Or did you fail it? Hey, I don't get no government pension. I, I, I don't own property like you do. 
My life's been hard. Hard life? Aren't you your own worst enemy? Most of us are. Yeah, I guess I fall into that category over and over. Seems we all do. I get a little money for going to war, basically selling my soul. Man, I do wish it could be turned around. I would gladly pay those son of bitches a monthly stipend to have not gone. I bought this property a long time ago and I try to use it to help out others. Texas, taxes, they aren't hiding it too well. I rent from the government just like all so-called landowners. What a vicious cycle. The very same government nearly destroyed me lets me rent off them. You know I didn't mean nothing, Tex. I know what you do. Many nights I wouldn't eaten it all if it weren't for you. You're good people. Uh, forget it. I wish everyone thought that, especially myself. What do you mean by that? Let's just say I've left some mighty grand things in my wake. Hey, Sam. Hey, son, come on in. How's it going? Hey, I just finished a new brew. Care for a sample? Why do you think I dropped by? Al, I noticed my friends have increased since my brewing skills have gotten better. Don't forget about the price. You need to put you out a big old tip jar. Oh man, I, I got a big one right over here. Well, we'll talk about it later, okay? Yeah. Mmm. Everyone in the world needs to drink something this great at least once before they die. Hey, how's your mother? Oh man, she's not doing very good. She, uh, coughing constantly. Wow. She's having a real hard time breathing. Wow, I, I feel for you. I know how much she means to you. You know, you're a lucky man that uh, our situations are completely reversed. I was very young when my mother died, and my dad was like your mother, saintly. It's hard to walk around in shoes that big and not constantly fall down. That's a fact. Uh, she told me some stuff about my father, and uh, it seems like she's trying to pack her tent. Uh, she may be packing her tent, but she ain't going anywhere. She's right here, right now, drinking my latest creation. And enjoying it. It's a great feeling knowing that you're everybody that came before you, but man, it hurts like hell to not have someone around that you worship. That's right. Have you been writing anything lately? You know, I had a strange thing happen yesterday. What is it? I wrote a song on the day my mother had been gone 24 years, and I messed around and never wrote the words down. Yesterday I was thinking about it, and I started planning and trying to remember the words. And they started coming back to me real slow, and I looked at my computer and saw the date. It had been exactly another 24 years, 48 years total. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's amazing, man. That That's... gave me duck bumps. Duck bumps? Yeah, they're like goose bumps, except they're smaller, so you get a whole lot more. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you care to hear it? Well, I ain't leaving until I do, so I guess it's your choice, huh? Wow. Good choice. 24 years ago, my mama passed away. I was only 14 years old. I remember that strange day. I slipped away by myself and I hung my head and cried. 24 years ago today is the day my mama died. Hey man, maybe this isn't a good time for this. I really, I really liked it. Well, I've always heard that time heals all wounds. If you truly love someone, the amount you miss them never changes. Uh, how are those two working out around the camp? Those two over there? Yeah. They don't do any work around camp. They seem to just want to watch the women take shower. Everybody, this is 
bubble. She's new to Austin. I want her to experience true Southern hospitality. Hi, 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 nice hello. Hi. Where have you been traveling? Mm. Mm. All over the place. <clears throat> Mostly in search of 70 degree weather. Well, that's a good thing to search for and even better to find. It happens here, but there's extreme heat and cold. It's never boring. Austin seems to treat people pretty well, especially when compared to other places I've been. I'd heard that. It seems to be true. I'd be interested in knowing how many problems a beautiful girl such as yourself encounters while traveling the world solo. <laughs> I've experienced many beautiful things during my travels. Some bad, but mostly good. And I would, I would take a bad experience over no experience any day. Uh, my sentiments exactly. I didn't start off solo. Most of my crew either got tired or they settled somewhere. And I always believed in exploring, continuing the journey, enjoying this carnival. What a magnificent attitude. I've spent many hours flipping over rocks hoping to find an answer <laughs> written on one of them. Turning over rocks. I like that. Please excuse me. Well, you're more than welcome here. If you need anything, let me know. One thing I've always enjoyed after a day of searching was a good shower. And we have a great solar one rigged up here. And you're welcome to use it. Sort of a liquid attitude adjustment. Thank you. I would, I would love a shower. That's been far too long. Clean or dirty, I still get hit on constantly by guys. Most men tend to overlook many things because their mind is always on just one thing. I was down where the water runs over And I thought I saw Hey, you two, come here. The reason I am in the happy man you see, you are smiling at me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You two may not have nothing you consider better to do, but you better find something because she don't need an audience. Let me tell you what, old man. If you weren't so damn old, I'd be kicking your ass all around this camp. Well, me being so old is about the only thing that keeps that from being a fantasy. You cocky old son of a bitch. <laughs> What's more, my being old has served and saved you. That must be some kind of compliment. You two hold on a second. This camp is a true democracy. Many of you have never seen one. They seem to be pretty rare. You get to actually see how someone votes. Does anyone here believe we need these two among us? Up is yes. You two are out of here, hands down. Gather your belongings and go. Can you believe these two? After all you've done for them? I know firsthand that drinking can make you do some strange things. 
Hot rolls on it. And peach cover. That tastes so good. Oh, thanks. How's mom? She ate a little soup and then took a nap. And Doc Harden came by to see her. Is she sleeping now? No, she's upstairs with some very nice people. You don't know them? I'm sorry I let them in. Hey, don't worry about it. Uh, I'll go find out. It sounds like they're either preachers or salesmen. So, you know. They're pretty much the same thing. I agree with that. I'm going to go try to find out what's going on. Hide the cobbler in the robes, <laughs> okay? I'll see you later. Mom, are you okay? What's going on? I need to talk to you alone, son. <laughs> Would you two mind waiting downstairs? I'd like to talk to you. My whole life I've steered clear of people like that, and now I can't. People like what? People that think they're right about everything, and that anyone that doesn't agree with them are wrong. If they don't see things exactly as they do, they can quite simply go to hell. Will you talk to them? Oh yes, definitely and defiantly. Okay, be easy on them. They mean no harm. Neither did Hitler. Son. Yeah. They asked me if I was afraid to die and I didn't get to answer them. Will you tell them I'm not afraid to die? It just really pisses me off. It's like being at the carnival and not having the money to buy the cotton candy. <laughs> That's some awful strong language coming from a lady. <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit, okay? <laughs> Thank you, son. What are you two up to? We're doing the Lord's work and we don't appreciate your attitude. My attitude? You two are pouring gas on the fire. You come into my mother's home where she's gravely ill and you throw your self-righteous attitude around like it was a baseball. We want only the best for your mother. That she be granted entry into the kingdom of heaven. This kingdom of heaven, would you please describe it for me? I've been puzzled by it just about as much as possible and a wide array of things have perplexed me, current company included. Heaven is the place where those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior will go upon the end of this trial period on earth. This life is but a test, a way station. This life is one never-ending miracle from your first breath to your last. I got off the subject. Let's get back to your heaven. When I was young, my dog died, and he was so full of love. All the people said he couldn't go to heaven. That was pretty confusing. That is not confusing at all. They were correct. Heaven is for humans. So your heaven is full of good people. Humans, do you allow women? Your religions always seem like something of a man's club to me. Are there any women there to serve and cook and clean? No dogs, cats, chickens, cows, birds, flowers, or clouds. It all seems pretty well man-made, don't you think? Okay. We don't appreciate being talked to like this. Did you ever think there's people out there that don't appreciate hearing what you have to say? We'll pray for your soul. Uh, I've never been much on praying. Thanks to you, this is one of my first. I pray to your God and to every God in the entire universe that when my days on this planet are over, and if I get a do-over, sort of a cosmic mulligan, and I get to go somewhere else, I pray that I get to go wherever my mother is. And I also pray that I don't go where you are. I don't like your attitude here now. I don't want to spend any more time with you in heaven or in hell. You know that ambulance is a sign of the devil. When did you two become such authorities on all things invisible? I'm sorry I let them get to your mother. You didn't do anything wrong. You run into people like that that they base their beliefs on things that they've been told, that they read, and they never seem to question anything. Um, I haven't got a problem with that. The problem lies in the fact that they get upset because you don't want to join their club and that they try to make you feel inferior in some way and you're totally wrong. Do you want ice cream on that? 
That's a silly question. I'll get it. Ah, uh, heaven or earth. How are we doing on supplies, Dick? Well, I'm going to town tonight to get some. Uh, got any special orders? Yeah, you know what I want. You know what I like. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. <coughs> Is amazing, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she sure is. How did your dog go with him? It was a little non understanding. You mean a misunderstanding? No, it was a non understanding. Can we talk a little more about your father? Sure. I'd really like for you to try to find him and get to know him. That would make me very happy. I'd kind of like to find him too someday and ask him a few questions. And I would like to start off asking him about my name. He wanted you to have a unique name that didn't make my father very happy because he wanted you to have his name just like his father before him. But you've always liked your name. You've told us you've liked your name and you know you've always been able to change it at any time if you like. It's all I had of him, you know. Uh, I'm going to enjoy it over time. Uh, I didn't think I wanted to spend all my life explaining it to people, so I had the cards made, and now when someone asks me about it, I just, it's got the story written on the back, I just hand them the card. That's right, it's remind me what it says. On the front it says, if you need anything done, don't hesitate to do it. That's right, <laughs> I think that's great. He may be very hard to find or dead, where would I start? Well, up until last month, his sister, your Aunt Dorothy, kept track of him. She kept me informed of him, and she kept him informed of you. But since she died and he had no other siblings, I have no other information, but I have a picture of him. Well, I never knew you kept so many secrets. Not so many secrets, just one big secret. Hmm. But I have a photograph of him. It's about 10 years ago. He was in Austin, Texas. There's so much of you in him. I know it's a big town, but I'm sure you can find him. Everybody probably knows him there. Well, someday in the future, I'll try to, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll hold on to this, and someday I'll try to find him for you. How's that? You hold on to it, but can you leave tomorrow? Tom Would you try to go find him now? I can't leave you right now, not in the shape you're in. I, I just can't do it. You can't. I'll be fine. Velda will take good care of me. And when you find him, will you tell him I still love him and that I never stopped loving him? There's so much of him in you. I see him every day. Uh, if it means that much to you, I hate to leave you now, but I, I'll get my stuff together and I'll try to leave in the morning, okay? It would make me very happy, son. Okay. Well, I love you. I love you, too. I'll, I'll do it. Mom? <laughs> I'm leaving. This is so hard for me to do right now. I know it's hard for you, son. But just know how much it means to me. How happy. This is the hardest thing I've ever done to see you walk out that door. I'll be, think <coughs> I'll be thinking of you and I'll call you, okay? <coughs> I love you, son. I love you too. Be careful. Yeah. Oh. I will. Okay. Bye bye. <coughs> Can travel 
where you are the only one there's no more sorrow life's left unravel the river of life Mom, my car just broke down right outside of your aid. I don't know what's wrong yet. Are you all right, son? In your beautiful car, maybe you should have flown. Riding in this car is just so much better than flying. And when the engine dies, you don't fall as far. That's true. But I was so hoping you'd make it to Austin. Mom, someone's stopping. I'll call you right back, okay? I love you. I love you too, son. Please be careful. Bye-bye. We just saw you pass by in Ridgeway. Thank you for stopping. My friend Tom is your age. He's a great mechanic. You call him? Yeah, we can do that. I'm sun up. There's an exclamation on the back. Let me give you one of ours. Golden rulers. I like that a lot. Looks like I may have some help coming. I'll see what happens. If nothing else, I'll fly to Austin from Durango. Just a thought, though. You might see about that beautiful train that goes from Durango to Silverton. Do you remember all the times that we rode in it? How beautiful and amazing it was? I sure do. I would so enjoy riding that again. That's a good idea. I'll do that. I love you. I love you too, son. Please be careful. Bye-bye. Thanks for stopping. Some people told me about a mechanic in your race. Tom? Well, yeah, Tom. Sure oh, yeah. Uh, Tom, he's a good one. He'll do right by you. Thanks for the kindness. Take care. Son, it's Sherry. Hello, how you doing? Hey, we stopped and talked to Tom. He's on his way. Oh, a cool old Diamond T Records pulling in right now. That'll be Tom. Hey, we're playing tonight at the Wright Opera House downtown. You should come and hear us. I'll try to do that. I'm pretty sure I'll probably do it down there. Thank you so much. I'll, see, I'll try to see y'all tonight, okay? Great. Look forward to it. Hey, good luck. Thank you. Thanks. You sure came out here fast. To your son up. That's one fine car. She's an old friend. How long have you had it for? Since I was about three. Three? Yeah. Wow. My grandfather got it. Well, ain't that something? Let's get her off the side of the road. I hope you realize what this car is. Gotta roll, gotta get, gotta go, gotta life. Hot, David. How's it going, Ted? This is Bubbles. He's new in town. Bubbles? What a great name. <laughs> Y'all want to get something, do Sure. Okay, let's move in there. Hi. Look at there. Hey. Well, I told you. You see him Sunday, boy. I got a bike. Looks pretty crafty, actually. I don't know if we'll get a seat. My friend Rob usually lets me sit back there in the back. Yeah, that'll do nice. Alright, I have some chips and water for okay. you guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
Bubbles rode a boxcar from Florida to Texas to the Louisiana swamp. Really? I did. It's yes. fascinating. Tell me all about it. Well, I, uh, I had the, the door open and the moon was full and bright and lit up the whole swamp and the greenery and it was really beautiful. It was quite a sight. Full moon? And I was imagining all the crocodiles <laughs> swimming down there and just my mouth was watering for some Cajun food. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was very beautiful and the moon was full. There's nothing quite like a, a Texas moon. Well, a Louisiana moon coming into Texas. <laughs> And you see the sun come up and come in the And I got to see the sun come up also and all the beautiful flowers everywhere. It's How like long the, have you been around here? Oh, it was, it's my first time. Yeah. Yep, my yeah. first time. I've never seen anything like a, an ocean of blue bonnets <laughs> um, and, and Indian paintbrushes. I just uh, I wanted a pick a bouquet, but I've heard that it's illegal to do that, so uh, yeah. I, I didn't. <laughs> we got whole prisons for blue bonnet papers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, they even fry some of them. Wow. Depends on how many. Wow. Yeah. Right. No Bubbles is your chosen name. What label did your parents hang on you, if you don't mind me asking? Samantha. Beautiful name. I bet you didn't care much for sound, did you? No, not really. What about you, Tex? I've always gotten that Tex thing everywhere I went, especially when I open my mouth. Why I get it here in Texas is quite a mystery. My given name is Richard, and I never cared for it. I always thought you should get the name yourself, like you have. Bubbles, huh? That's a good one. There was a time when I called myself X, just for the hell of it. It always pissed me off when somebody called me Dick. I scratched off most of my hair over that one. I always wondered how it got a toehold, and why anyone in their right or wrong mind would, that was named Richard, would call himself Dick. Names have such an effect on a person. What is it? Are you okay? Somewhere in this world there's this man that I named Son. I don't know if he kept it or not. I think about him often. My son, Son. Like that son? That's quite a name. I've never heard anything like that before. Like that one Johnny Cash song. Were you trying to make him strong? First of all, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. If I was thinking at all. I haven't talked about this in a long time. My last name is Nup. K-N-U-P-P. -P. So I just thought it'd be great to name him Son. His mother and grandfather wasn't too pleased. They went along for some reason. I take it you and Son aren't close. They've got really good food here. Are y'all ready to order? Yeah. All right. I'll Would have you like? your number one dinner, please. I'll okay. Thank you. Uh, give me a chili briano and a small cup of milk. Yeah. I'll have my usual. Such a strong connection. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we've got Beth Williams and Eagle coming up to play for you while we're on a break. And then we'll be back. Thank you. Thank y'all for telling Tom about my car. He came out and picked it up. It's got a blown head gasket. It's going to take two weeks to fix. I'm going to try to get to Durango, and I'm going to try to fly from Durango to Austin. Well, we're from Austin. Good idea. Yeah, we're headed that way. You should just come with us. How are you doing a lot of shows? How long is it going to take? Three, three, four days, I think. I need to get there real quick. So. Is there any chance you could drop me off in Durango? Oh, yeah, yeah. Have y'all ever ridden that train that goes from Silverton to Durango? We were talking about that already, too. I can't believe you said that. I tell you what, if you want to ride it, it's my treat. And it's beautiful. It's amazing. All I need to do is just get to Durango. You can do that. To know him well, I need to find some truth to sell all the time. Time will tell what lies ahead falls far behind. I'm doing fine. I walk the line. I walk the line, it's a thin line, 
I just want to thank y'all for the show at the Ryan Opera House on that. It was beautiful, man. I've never seen anything like it. And the fact that you call yourselves the Golden Rivers, my mother and everybody I grew up around were natural Golden Rivers. They did everything. They weren't religious, but they based their life on thinking about, you know, if I don't want it done to me, you know, I'm not going to do it somewhere else. And it was just amazing. Um, I was skipping school one time and watching the Beverly Hillbillies. Man, it was my favorite show. Well, son, tell me, was it Granny or was it Ellie Mae that made you watch the Beverly Hillbillies? Well, of course, it had to be Granny. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no way it could have been Ellie Mae. So, uh, you know, there's this episode where this guy comes up and knocks on the mansion door, and Granny opens the door. Well, before that, no, he didn't knock on the door. He rang the doorbell. Every time the doorbell rang, they would all look around and wonder where that mysterious music came from. And every time the music came on, Coincidentally, there'd be someone at the door. So she opens the door and there's a guy there and he goes, what church do y'all go to? And about that time, Jed comes ambling up and you know, the dog do. And Granny goes, me and Jed, we're golden rulers. You watched it too, man. <laughs> it's a great show, man. I don't know. That's where we got our name. It would be a better world if everyone was a golden ruler. Man, that's a fact. It's written in every religion nearly word for word just give or take a word or two. It would make for a really short Bible. In the beginning, the golden rule, the end. <laughs> Easy to memorize. You don't have to go to any churches, no air conditioning or anything else. Sit under a tree if you want to, I don't care. Just, you know, don't go around hurting people, all right? Hey man, come on back. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I just got to Austin. I'm trying to find my father. I haven't seen him in 55 years. I've got an old photo and his name. Do you have any idea how I can try to find him? One, one of the things you can do is just go down to the sheriff's station. You can talk to the watch commander at the desk and he'll be able to help you uh, locate your father that way. So just tell the cab driver I need to go to the sheriff's station? Yes, sir. You can do that. Located at 5555 Airport Boulevard and they should be able to help you. Thank okay. you so much. Appreciate it. All right, Thank not a problem. Have a good day. Hey, you know what? I'm headed down there. Might as well save yourself some cab fare. I can give you a ride. If you don't mind being in handcuffs. You're not wanted anywhere, are you? Well, I like to think that someone, somewhere wants me. Uh, I'll just call a cab. I wouldn't want to put you out. And I wouldn't want to put me in. That's okay. I'm headed that way anyway. I can, I can take you. And this time, no cuffs. No. I appreciate that. Not a problem. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, force of habit. Just think of me as a cab driver with a gun. I guess I better tip you one. Absolutely. Hey, uh, I want to thank you. Hey, you're very welcome. Hope you find your dad and I hope everything works out well with your mom. Yeah, I miss my mom. Where would we be without him? Certainly not here. 
I truly appreciate it. You're very welcome. You Thank take you. care. Hey, can I help you? You almost told you you could possibly help me find my father. Well, what's his name? Richard Nupp, K-N-U-P-P. H? He's 82. I don't know how to tell you this, but your father's been murdered. His body's down at the morgue. Oh, God. What'd you find out? What happened? What is it? His, his father's dead, just last night. Oh, my God. When's the last time you saw him? My mother says I was about three. I have no memories of him, Harley. I can't imagine what you're feeling right now. Thinking about my mother, she wanted this so much, and She's the one that sent me here looking for him. She's gravely ill in Colorado. It's, it's probably going to be the hardest thing you've ever had to do, but you're going to have to go down to the morgue and identify the body. And they're going to ask you some, a bunch of questions. Can you do that? I guess. I've got a 10-year-old photo and some 55-year-old memories, whatever good that'll do. Do you happen to know what happened? Not, not at this time. They're still investigating. It just happened. Um, if they find out some more, we can give you a call. Do you have some contact information? Sure. I've got a strange name. It's on that car. Okay. Sun up. If you need anything done, don't hesitate to do it. There's an explanation on the back. <laughs> well, that is something. Can I keep this? Sure. Your father did this? Yeah. He must have had a sense of humor. Yeah. Can I take you to the morgue? Yeah, I appreciate that. I want to thank both of y'all. You've been very kind to me, and I do appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Can I help you? The police told me that my father's down here. Are you sent out? They told me about your situation. Yeah, I came to Austin to find him, and I never dreamed it would end up like this. You're the next of kin. I know it's been many years since you've seen your father, but if I were you, don't go in there. Okay. Hey! Yo! Hey, bring out what you know! Okay. I know this is going to be one of the hardest things you've ever done. It's become far too easy for me. But knowing your story has made it difficult for me as well. Hey, Horst, have you seen my sandwich? No. It seems you're constantly losing your lunch. You've got to keep your focus. What does it look like? It's rectangular. Hey, this is not my father. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. I'll get this information to the police as soon as possible. I'm sorry you had to go through this, but I'm glad it turned out well for you. Hey, thanks. I don't remember putting that there. Well, I uh, hope you have a great visit with your father. Thank you. I hope that also. Uh, I'm sure glad I didn't call my mother before I came in. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, thanks to both of y'all. Okay. This hole in my bucket All these little things kept falling through Started with the lies, led to the compromise Lately I can see that you're falling too And me, 
How's it going? I don't mean to bother you, but you seem so down and out. These drawings are amazing. Is there any chance I could buy one of them or several of them for my mother? For your mom? They're five dollars each. They're just copies, but I'd sell the originals. And for your mom, I'd, I'd make a deal for any price. There's so much work in each one of them. Thanks. That means a lot, especially now. Yeah, I know depression. I've always been right above it or buried beneath it for no apparent reason. <laughs> I know that well. There's no middle ground, ever. Yeah, there's a place in West Texas where people in the middle all moved. Midland. I spent the year there one day. The smell got to me. They say it smells like money, the ones that think they own the land. And that may be true. I never cared for the smell of money. Being a bigger germaphobe than Howard Hughes or Howdy Doody or Hitler, I'm always thinking about the places money has been. Howdy Doody was a germaphobe? Well, you know, he was a bigger germaphobe than Hitler, but he's mostly scared of, uh, of termites. I'm sorry I derailed you. I didn't, I've got a bad habit of cutting in on people. Well, I should wish I could get paid like an old country doctor. And chickens and vegetables? Yeah, and I'd take them back to the camp. Of course, somebody would be trying to rob it on the way back to the camp. I like what you said, though. Think they own the land. I like that. Americans all think they own their land. I tell them, don't pay your taxes, and you'll see who really owns the land. They'll send you a certified letter in no time. So, separation of church and state bull balls they are the two landloaders landowners in america hell they may be the same like two evil twins and they stole it from someone else 
I like the indigenous peoples. I like the way they live. They knew you can't own anything. If you're not real careful, it can own you. Uh, I'm sun up. Huh, ain't that something, sun up. There's an explanation on the back. I like the saying, if you need anything done, don't hesitate to do it. I'm Richard Ross, nice to make your acquaintance. Likewise. You mind telling me what has you so down? No, I don't mind, but you won't understand. Try me. It's my mother. She died about two months ago, and she was, she was my whole life. She was always there for me, no matter what. It was, it was unconditional love. I couldn't even afford to bury her. I had to rely on friends. I think about her constantly. Well, like I said, no one would understand. Man, if you searched the whole world over, you wouldn't find anyone that understands more than I do. I love my mother so much. I think about her constantly. She's in real poor health. I do understand. Wow. There have been a lot of people in the last few days telling me I, if I live right and I pray, I get to see her again when I die. What do you think of that? Would you like to see her right now without dying or praying? That's all I want. Tell me what to do. Turn around and look in that glass right there. What am I looking for? Am I doing something wrong? Look again. That's your mother, your father. That's everyone that ever came before you. They all live within you, immortal. How does it make you feel? <laughs> I see my mother. I, I am my mother. I've been looking. I've been looking in the wrong place. Thank you, son. You're welcome, man. A smile looks a lot better than a frown. Huh. Wow. Are you from Austin? No, I live in Colorado. What brings you to Austin? That's something you might can help me with. I came here searching for my father. Went to the police station. They told me he was in the morgue. It was a pretty bad experience. I went to the morgue, and I looked at the man there. It wasn't my father. When was that? Right before I met you. This is about a 10-year-old photo. Have you ever seen this man anywhere around Austin? Wow, that's incredible. I started this about two days ago. That's great. I know your dad. I know your father well. We all know him as Tex. I live in his camp. He's helped me in so many ways. I saw him two days ago. He helped me bury my mother. Where is this camp and what is it? It's some cabins and outbuildings down by the river. Uh, and where down on their luck people can, can, can uh, have some food and some help and some rare encouragement. It's down by the tracks near the river. I'll show you, I'll show you the way. I've been gone for two days, I'd be glad to get back. We have a party there every night. A party every night? Every night, yeah, your dad thinks we're just, we just don't have enough celebrations in life. Go inside and ask Blake to make us two green belt smoothies, you'll love them. And I'll start getting my stuff together and we'll go. Thank you. I'm gonna call my mother first and tell her the good news. Thanks to you, I only have to talk to myself. I do it all the time anyways. I just never knew I was talking to mom. Son. Hey, I found a man that knows dad and he's gonna take me over there. Dad's on, he owns some kind of camp for homeless people. And he's very well thought of. That's wonderful, son. This makes me so happy. I just wish I was there with you. You always are. You be extra careful now and let me know what you find out, okay? I love you. I love you and uh, I'll keep in for Try to eat something. I'm actually feeling hungry for the first time since you left. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, goodbye. How can I help you? I'd like to get two green belt smoothies. Okay, you green belt smoothies? Yeah, that's right. I saw you outside talking to Richard. Are y'all friends? I just met him, but yeah, we're friends. Uh, he seems like a great soul. 
They accept a lot of people here. Many people come in sick and depressed, and Richard visits with them while they wait for their prescriptions to be filled. They all love him. Wow, those look great. Yeah. How much do I owe you? Nothing. I hadn't seen Richard smile in a long time, and you seem to put a smile on his face, so they're on me. Thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. You too. Hey, Richard. Richard. You need any help packing up your stuff? No. While you were gone, I got a call from a, my friend. You know, he gives free people free rides down here to get their prescriptions. And it'll be, I'll be real quick, is that okay? Sure, man, take your time. You ever been in a mental institution? Not yet. Twenty-seven times. Damn, man. Nom? I worried about going. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, you worried about going? It means I worried about going. They wanted me to go. I didn't want me to go. I watched the Wheel of Misfortune spin one night and got a high number. I was very lucky. I can't kill an insect. I didn't think I'd fare very well going over and killing every damn thing I saw. Maybe even start enjoying it. I was all gung-ho, patriotic, wanting to serve God and country with a lot of pressure from my dad. And how'd that turn out? 27 trips to the mental institution and a million nightmares. I had to go defend my country. My dad was army. You didn't have to go, you chose to go. You made a decision. With every decision comes, every choice comes consequences. It's like a maze with all these different paths going different directions. You can get lost pretty damn easy. I didn't know what it would lead to. If you were a very kind, compassionate person, which I feel you are, you should have known that it would lead to something bad. And you know, I, I've known a lot of people that went to Nam and they ended up enjoying it. Me too, me too. You know, they were given free alcohol and free bullets. Hell, it was like a Disney World of death. If only I'd have known. If you'd have been walking down the street and looked up and saw a sign that said, Bakery, help wanted in the window. What do you think you'd have been doing when you walked through the door? Making bread. Okay. If you walk on down the street and you see another sign that says Army Recruitment Office and you walk through that door, what do you think you would be doing? I was very young and told of a wide array of educational Army. opportunities and no. other benefits. Army's kill. That's their purpose. The, the Norse had berserkers, man. They were very mentally challenged and twisted individuals. Everyone was scared of them, you know? No one messed with them. We take kind, compassionate, young people and we totally ruin their lives. You know, we should get our army out of prisons. It's true. There's a prison in Colorado where the inmates make Hannibal Lecter look like a damn Boy Scout. You know, you have a great soul. All you can do now is let those ex try to take those experiences and let them serve some good purpose. And from what I hear about you, you're doing that. You know, uh, I hope you, I hope you go on, and I hope nothing but the best ever crawls across your path. You two have a good conversation. Indeed, yeah, we do. You remind me a lot of your father. 
He loves a spirited verbal exchange. He'll be so happy to see you. He talks about you all the time. He talks about me. Yeah. But when he said son, I never knew he meant son. Yeah. I can't wait to see the look on his face. Wow. Charlie, Charlie lives at the camp. He makes these these pin cushions that look like rocking chairs. He's a he's a great guy. He he tells a great story. Well, hello there. Hello, how you doing? Charlie, this is Tex's son. Son. His son? Son? It's complicated. It ain't too complicated. Uh, He's been telling me about you for years. It's great to finally meet you. I never thought I would. Now, while you were gone, somebody attacked Tex last night in the alley, and we don't know yet how he's faring. No. Where is he and how is he? Well, they should know at the camp by now. That's where I'm heading. They told him his father was dead. They showed him a body in the morgue, and it had his billfold. That piece of the puzzle fits quite nicely. The word on the street is that the two fellas that attacked Tex got to drinking and couldn't decide on the proper way to share their profits. And one killed the other beyond a shadow of a doubt. Don't you worry about your father, son. He's got a multitude of spirits watching over him. And many of us grounders only want the best for him. Thank you. Uh, can we go to the camp now and try to find out about him? Sure thing. Oh, oh, hey. Look at you. Hey! It's Texas son! That looks just like Ted Nugent. <laughs> it is Ted Nugent. Hello. This is Texas son's son. Hi, right, welcome. Come okay. on in. This is our camp. He's hey, wow. our family. Hi. Hey. Hot yeah. Y'all ready for dinner? You're roughing it, aren't you? Oh yeah, we're roughing it. <laughs> this is amazing. I like it. This is how we live. This is this is what what it's meant for. Wow. I like it. Ah, this camp is amazing. I'm set up. It is. Hi, I'm Bubbles. Nice to meet you. Heard a lot about you. Nice to meet you too. I was uh I was with your father yesterday, when it happened. Mm. Uh, and he's in the hospital now. So we're gonna go down there right now and see how he's doing. Have you heard how he is and how are you doing? Well, they don't let us know very much. Redheaded homeless stepchildren syndrome. That's <laughs> you know, um, I'm fine. I'm doing fine. I just, I'm really worried about your father. He's something else. Love at first sight. <laughs> I appreciate that. That sounds familiar. I heard that from my mother when she said the same thing. So. Uh, do you mind if I go with you? Not at all. Do you mind? I, I just need to change clothes real quick and I'll just be a minute. Okay, that sounds great. I'll wait it's, for you outside. It's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Richard Nup. Okay, are you related? No, okay. but could I see some form of ID? Excuse me. I'm his son. Okay. Okay, so Richard Nup is in room 342. You can go ahead and go up. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. 55 years, man, 55 years. Till takes hello. I will. He knows how we feel. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Okay, thank you. More thank all of you. I will. Thank you. We have very limited space. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Outside's better for us. Thank you. Also.
I'm dead or dreaming. But I like it. It's great to see you. How are you doing? I've thought about this day for so many years, wondering what I could say. If it took me getting waylaid, then that's good also. How is your mother? She's not very well. She insisted I look for you. She insisted I find you. There's so much I'd like to tell her. I just wouldn't know where to start. Just a second. Hey, Velda. Can you give the phone to Mother? Yeah, thank you. Here's a good start. Really? The hard thing for Tex. He's doing well. They think he's going. They're going to let him out in the morning. He's up there talking to my mother right now on my cell phone. Tex is using the cell phone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm going to go back up there, and we have a lot of stuff to talk about after all these years. Y'all can go back to the camp, and then I'll come back there and inform y'all about what's going on there. Thank you. I appreciate y'all coming down here so much. And yeah. Just thank y'all. You bet. You bet. Hey, son, will you give him this for me? I sure will. Uh, the rest of you are going to have to hold off on everything until I know you better, okay? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's good news. Is there a chance I could see his doctor? Yeah, I'll go see if I can find Thank you so much. Goodbye, Lizzie. I will see you soon. Your mother wants to talk to you. Yeah, that's great. No. No. You're welcome. I love you. How are you feeling? You feeling better now <laughs> that you are? Well, uh, you just take care and I'll, I'll holler at you in a little bit, okay? Well, I love you. Bye-bye. That's the happiest I've heard my mother in many years. I'd like to thank you for that. I take it you had a wonderful conversation. Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you so much for that privilege. You're welcome. This is the happiest I've been in many, many years, getting to see you and talk to her. I had quite an experience this morning. The police told me you were dead. I went to the morgue and I saw the body of one of the men that stole your billfold and hit you on the head. I'm truly sorry you had to experience that. Well, it got a lot better when I went around and started hearing all these wonderful stories about you and all the good things you've done for so many people. I saw your camp and it's amazing. And uh, you may not feel like talking about this right now, but there's sure some things I'd like to know. After talking to your mother, I told her for the first time and asked her permission to tell you. Ask her permission? Could you pour me just a little water? I do not expect you and your mother to understand this. I only hope you will try. I'm not sure I understand it myself. I had so many problems when you were young. I made one mistake after another and couldn't seem to focus on anything. I was just about as messed up as any person could get thinking, drinking, and constantly depressed. Your grandfather helped me out over and over, but finally he had enough. One day he told me that if I would get out of both of your lives, you would never want for anything. If I didn't get out of your lives, he would wash his hands of you and your mother. My grandfather? 
I never believed that because he idolized you both. I felt the same way about you. It drove me even crazier than I already was. He was a good man and loved you both dearly. He had only the best of intentions, and if it was turned around, I would probably have done the same thing, much faster than he did. My mother just found this out today. After much thought, so much thought, I left. We deserved to know this a long time ago. Things look different when they're behind you. I thought of you both constantly, and I always came to the same conclusion, that you were better off without me in your life. I was always hoping I could make myself worthy of you. Time races along. It seemed like two weeks or 200 years. I don't expect you to understand. I always tried to keep up with both of you. Well, this, this is way too much to sort out quickly. Uh, I think you need to get some rest, and I'll come back and talk to you later. No, I'm fine. Let's talk. Mother told me a little bit about the effect that the war had on them. Both of you, but especially you. It consumed me and transformed me. I see the man you are today and I hear all the wonderful stories about you. Why didn't you come back? My grandfather's been gone for many years. I made a promise to you, grandfather. Right or wrong, I could never go back on a promise. I'm doing that right now and it bothers me very much. Even so, I know it was a monumental mistake not to contact you and your mother. Mistakes have never been anything I was short of. Well, I understand and admire your code of ethics. Do you mind telling me what was your turning point? One spring, I was watching the flowers, trees, and birds, thinking how nature is constantly renewing itself. That it just came to me. You can renew yourself, and let the old go, and welcome the new. It's something that has worked for me daily. Well, that's a good one. Review yourself and then renew yourself. I like it. I also renewed myself in you. We're the same, just like links in a chain. I always knew I was given another chance to walk this earth in you make some different mistakes, and maybe fight my own battles for a change. Knowing that your mother and I were forever united in you brought me great solace. I feel the same way. I haven't met many that understand that concept. Uh, I've always felt that you and Mom took every step that I did. Many understand and accept the concept in animals, trees, and flowers. They just don't apply it to themselves. They don't want to embrace the animal that they are. Need to keep thinking they are above everything special and chosen. Rest up because round two starts tomorrow. And I've got a million questions I want to ask you, but I think we should start off with uh, talking about the word sun because it's had a great effect on my life. So I'm going to go get a room and I'll come up in the morning and pick you up. Nonsense. Go over to the camp and stay in my cabin tonight. You'll enjoy it and so will the others. How's Bubbles? She seems to have a special quality. Reminds me of your mother. She's good. She said to give you this. She's downstairs waiting with the others and they all told, said to say hello. Hi, I'm Dr. Cumberdale. I'm Sun Up. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mr. Nup, uh, we ran your tests. Everything's checked out. We want to run one more, and we'll try to get, out, get you out of here tomorrow morning. That's great news. Well, you guys have a good day. Thank you so much. That is good news, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. I'll come pick you up in the morning. Can't wait. Son, I love you. I love you, too. I never thought I'd hear that. You take care, and I'll see you in the morning, okay? Okay. 
thank you again, son. I so enjoyed talking to your father so much. He said he's coming to see me soon. You're welcome. I love meeting and talking to him. This has made me so very happy. I'm picking him up in the morning. We're going to talk it over and under. Will you be sure to take turns listening? I'll try to listen, but you know that's something I need to work on. How are you feeling? I'm pretty tired today, but once more, I'm extremely happy. <coughs> be careful and know I love you. I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Well, I love you. Tomorrow it is, okay? Bye. Bye-bye, son. Hi. How are you doing? Great. How was your visit? Is he getting out in the morning? We had this great visit, good conversation. Good. He, he's supposed to get out in the morning. I'm going to go get him. So. Okay, he seems good. to be feeling really well. That's great. That's good news. Yeah. And you seem to make quite an impression on him. You know what he said about you? No. He said that you remind him of my mother. And I got to tell you, that's one hell of a compliment. Oh, wow. Speechless. I've never been told anything like that before. That's, just... that's a good compliment. Hey, what's everybody doing out there? They are getting ready for your welcome party and the return of your father tomorrow. I've heard he likes a, he really likes a good party. <laughs> he does. He says that you need a lot of enjoyment in life to balance out all the down times. Well, I can't argue with logic like that. Me neither. We'll have some good food, good music, great conversations, maybe some dancing. I really enjoyed my time here. Well, there's a lot of wonderful people here. Uh, it just seems like a great gathering of souls. So. It is. Everybody's so beautiful and genuine, and it's it's nice to be around a family. Well, I'm going to go talk to a few of them and visit with them some. I'll see you after a while. Okay, sounds great. I'm going to clean up a little bit more and um, tidy up. And Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. Well, Jack, how was work today? Oh, shit. Hey, not too good, man. This guy across from me had a dog. Nice looking dog, too, actually. <laughs> hey, Jack. This is this is Tech Son. 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 Nice Son. to meet you. Man. Nice to meet you. This is Bubbles. Hi. Bubbles. Hi, Bubbles. Nice to meet you. She was with Tex last night when he got attacked downtown. Yes, oh man. I was. Didn't well, hurt him. Is he is he okay now? I went Have to you? see him, yeah. I went to see him today and they let they wouldn't let them go off, but they let me go up and I saw him and talked to him and I hadn't seen him in fifty five years. Holy shit. We had man. a pretty long conversation. It was good. And I grew up most of my life uh, hating him. And after I got here and saw what he's done for all of y'all and everything, I feel different. You know, I admire him. Uh, he's a fine man. Well, I never knew that. I well, never knew anything about you him. You should be proud of him. I am proud of him. But, you know, 55 years is a long time to go without knowing your dad. So. I've got a wonderful mother, though. She's the reason I'm here. She's real sick. And uh, I came down here to find him. I didn't know he's Tex. His name's Richard Nub. Yeah, that's his real name. Anyhow, you know, the camp, you know, the way I, the fun y'all seem to be having and everything. I don't, it doesn't look like you're having that much fun, but, you know. Oh, man, no, no. I, this is the best it can be right now. This place make, is the world to me. Oh, that's good. And, and your father is the world to me. Well, I appreciate that. Everybody's had such wonderful things to say about him, man. It really makes me feel good. We had a great conversation. He's supposed to get out in the morning. Well, that's wonderful, man. You know, ever since I, I heard that he was not, you know, that he was he had gotten hurt, I was, I've been just feeling terrible. I've been feeling guilty. I've been feeling like shit, man. Why's that? Well, because I think I just wasn't very nice to him, and he's such a wonderful man. I, I It just, you know, it just bothers me that I, you know, I just, mistreated him. I was rude to him. Well, yeah, the, the thing I've seen about life is, man, you have to be real careful with your conversations because uh, you never know when you're having your last conversation with someone you care about. So, you know, he's going to be good. I know he cares about you. He cares about all these people. And, you know, just Thank take, you, take care of yourself. And be careful. And tomorrow I hope you have a totally dog-free day. Well, thank and you. And bring in some bucks. <laughs>
Cardboard's expensive, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good cardboard. Yeah. Jack's a good man. He's, he's a good, good man. man. There's some good people in there. Yes, there is. Yeah. It's like a little bit of Shangri-La or something. Well, yeah, it's home. <laughs> it's home. I've never been around this many people. I grew up, I've had an easy life. Mm -hmm. You all had a hard life and you've got over it. I've, my life has been so easy. Well, sometimes easy lives are hard too. Yeah, sometimes we, we all, it's hard to tell. Man, Charlie, that was some party last night. Where'd you get the chair? Uh, that was just a preliminary round. Tonight is the real party. I borrowed this. Um, thought your dad might be a little dizzy today. That's very thoughtful. I'm fixing to go down there and get him, and uh, I feel real nervous about it. Oh, uh, don't be nervous. It's gonna be fine. I sure this do is your it. father's favorite hat. I'm sure he'd want it. Thank you. Yeah. Would you like to go down there with me? Pick him up? Oh, I don't want to intrude. I know you guys have a lot to talk about. He seems to really like you, and it'd make me a lot less nervous if you'd go with me. Would you go? I'd love to. Okay. I'll be back in a second. All right, I'll be waiting on you. Okay. Why don't you run down there with us? Thanks for the offer, but I need to stay here and coordinate the party. I want it to be a doozy. It's such a great feeling seeing how much y'all all care for my father. I feel so comfortable and loved here. You know, we don't know you, but we all love your father. He loves you, so we love you, and, and not much is gonna change that. My entire life, I've never had to earn love. It's always just been given to me, strength-free. True love is strength-free. It's a gift, the very best one. Thank you. Take care. You ready? Ready. We'll see you later, Charlie. All right. Bye, Charlie. Well, how's it going? I think we got it. Wino Vino is the band. They're coming. They've been here before. Where are you going to put them? We put them right there in the big tent. And we got Ted from Twisted X is bringing some beer. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, the food's going good. I think we're ready. I got a, a belly dancer and a fire dancer coming later. Oh, man. It's, it's going to be a party. Doozy. A doozy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't hit you with the can or get beer on you, did I? No, oh. so, uh, I think I met you the other day with Tex. Oh, I, I heard he got attacked. Is he okay? We're on our way to the hospital right now to pick him up. This is his son. Happy to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You're a lucky soul to have a father like you do. I just found him after 55 years, but I'm finding out how much people love him and stuff. It, it makes you feel really good. Uh, you need any help here? Oh no, I'll muddle on through. Okay. We're having a big party tonight out to camp. Would you come by? Yeah, yeah, I know where that is. It's a costume party too, so you can be anything you want to be. Right. <laughs> it's such a pleasure. It's nice seeing you. Thank you. I'll nice see you then. You. See you tonight. By. Okay. Bye bye. Man, it feels so good to be out of that hospital. I'm such a hypochondriac that I could die in there in about three days without even being sick. <laughs> Me too. I love the way they tell you to get some rest and do something to you every 10 minutes. I know I haven't known your father very long, but I haven't seen him nearly as happy as he is right now. I know on the other end of that telephone, my mother's sitting in Colorado talking, and she's just as happy as he is. It's a great thing. It's true. Okay, I'm going to get some food. Oh, great. You spent some time with son. What do you think of him? I really like him. He seems so much like you. <laughs> what do you think? Well, he's everything I'd hoped he'd be. His mother seemed to have done a good job raising him. Well, what you harvest has a lot to do with what you plant. I got a friend over here making a sculpture like we talked about in the hospital. I want you to see it. That'd be great. I'm gonna go see if I can help over there and I'll uh, 
We'll see you later, okay? Bye. 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 Wow, man, a 60 model Ford two-door ranch wagon. That's a rare car. Wow. That's what happens when you loan your car to people. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never loan my 55 anymore. This is my friend Jake. He's doing this amazing sculpture. It is amazing, man. That's great. How, you've been working on it a long time? I have. I've been working on it a good spell now. It's uh, something me and Tex have worked up six generations. You know the thing about it, more people need to realize, we were talking about when he's in the hospital about how, you know, everybody has so many people in their past and they're all alive inside you. I had a dream kind of like this, you know, showing all the different people in so many ge generations and how they live within you and stuff. It's, you must have had the same dream. I love it. Now that in the middle, say that was you, yeah. and then you got your parents out, your grandparents, grandparents great grandparents, yeah. great great grandparents, goes on back. Uh, and they're all different yeah. colors. And they're all different colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. I like it. What do you think about it? Beautiful. Amazing. Are you going to just keep making it bigger? I'm going to go all the way back as far as I can go. It's a pleasure. Good to see you. Take it easy. Yeah, I'll see you later. See you at the party. All right. Wow. Well, would you look at this? This nearly makes being in the hospital worthwhile. Yeah, nearly. Tex. Huh. Think this is a love letter? Looks like one. There is one. Welcome home, Tex. We love you. And there is fresh coffee. Oh boy. Sit down. Thank you. I've spent so much time since I met you thinking about seeing your mother again. Mm. Not wanting her to see this old man that has captured me. I totally understand those feelings. I've spent so much time thinking about what our meeting would be like and playing out different scenarios in my mind. Now that it's happened, it's, it's nothing like I ever thought or dreamed. I'm going to go get bubbles and look through the costumes. Do you need anything? No, not a thing. Something's been bothering me I want you and your mother to know. What's that? I never took any money from your grandfather, and it was offered. I truly admire that. I really want your mother to know that. Would you like to call her right now? No, this is something I want to do in person. This seems like a dream right now. A very nice one. I hope nothing wakes me up anytime soon. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Hey, uh, we're having a big masquerade party tonight, and I'm really having a good time. And uh, Dad's wonderful. I'm really enjoying my visit. I can't wait to see you both. And I hope you have a really good time at your party. Just don't forget to call me, okay? All right. I love you. I'll talk to you later. I love you too, son. Laughter paints a portrait on this painting canvas.
Hi, Devil, would you give that to Zora? Thank you. You're a nice guy, no? Doozy. <laughs> I hear tell you make a pretty good Shirley Temple, not to drink. <laughs> I went last year just like this. <laughs> and I was called everything from a Black Moses to old Charlie Manson. <laughs> it seems like white people have trouble with us, a Black Moses. But they didn't have a problem with a Black Manson. You know, I wish people would get over that whole white and black thing, you know, and start calling each other food coats. Cause you take this, you know, I'm peanut butter, and you're mocha, you're mocha Moses, man. Mocha Moses. Man, you're making me hungry. <laughs> you know, no one's ever been, would ever be killed over a food color. There's been a lot of people killed over that black and white thing. Yeah, let's get some. Okay. What are we going to eat? <laughs> parties when we're here. What do you do here? Texas is my father. This is the one I came to Austin looking for. Oh, nice. wow. Y'all look great. <laughs> you do too. I loved your show. It was amazing. We had such a good time. We did. We're so glad to see you here. Let's go find Texas and we'll talk you. You have an interesting right. bug on your head. <laughs> Worn out. <laughs> I am too. Yeah. Your dad's still out there dancing. He's a bona fide partier. It sure seems that way. <laughs> Can't believe it. So, you and your dad are going back to Colorado soon. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be quite a happy occasion for the both of you, but I have to tell you, I'm really gonna miss both of you guys. I'm really gonna miss this place. I'm gonna miss everyone I met here, especially you. I think you know, stay on, you know, stay here and take care of the ship. I'm sure my dad would like that too. Someone needs to do it. So. I'd like that, but I, sh I sure don't want to overstay my welcome. There's some things about me, my past, I'm not proud of. Things that would probably change the way you and your dad think of me. You know what's in your past created you, and my dad and I both like you. And everything in the future you can create, so don't worry about it, okay? It'll be good. Thank you so much for that. You're that was one hell of a party last night. What time did you quit dancing? About one. Was that Zorro costume hot? No. Huh. Hey. Good morning. <laughs> Did you have a good time last night? Oh, I had the best time. That was a great party. Oh, so, so much fun. Fun dancing, fun music. Your costumes. Great costumes. <laughs> I, we're going to go downtown and have some breakfast. Would you like to go with us? I'd love to. All right. This sure seems to be a grand divide of people and attitudes here in Austin. I guess it's that way everywhere. I've led such an easy life. 
I've just never been this close to it before. It's a fine one. It's very easy to spot the ones that have been on both sides of it. And those that have spent their lives completely on one side or the other. It's all about compassion. Some people seem to have an abundance and share it with everyone. Some seem to have very little and keep it mostly to themselves. It's a symbol of slip and fall to go from no problems at all to the other side of the line. It seems like climbing Mount Everest is go the other direction. Your entire life, things are going to knock you down. And each time you have two choices. Stay there or get up. Many of these people got knocked down and stayed there. Getting up doesn't mean you ain't going to get knocked down again. But each time you get up, you're stronger and have more respect for yourself. That's what matters, how you feel about yourself. Many people expect others to respect them when they don't respect themselves. It's an impossible situation. Son, I need to talk to you, Mama. Sure. Oh, just, just a second. Velda? Lizzie just died. Oh no! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There's a fine line between waking up every morning in a king size bed. With a big old fluffy pillow beneath your head And shivering the whole night through Wondering what you're gonna do And your only cover is a copy of the Daily News There's a fine line Between sitting in a fine restaurant and a leather chair Complaining that you feel your steak is just a little too rare And crawling out of a cardboard box Moving slowly down an alleyway Digging through trash cans hoping that some food is there There's a fine line Between calling up your family doctor when you're feeling ill Never worrying if you have the money for the healing pill And standing in a line all day Embarrassed that you cannot play Watching an old man in front of you Collapse and pass away There's a fine line Between spending every day of your life Surrounded by friends Never bothered if they'll stay beside you till the bitter end And walking the streets alone Wearing somebody else's clothes Feeling that the air in your soul is slowly leaking out There's a fine line Between thinking everyone you see is looking down on you Feeling hopeless and there's nothing in the world that you can do And gazing down on the earth from above As you travel with the one you love And your only problems are a million miles away There's a fine line Between finding that the end of your life is coming around and out of all of your friends, not a true one can be found. And ending your journey on the street late one night. 
Picked up by strangers, taken to the county morgue Well, it's a fine line Fine line It's a fine line It's a fine line It's a fine line Fine line With a smile upon your face because you knew love it's a fine line. It's only going to get worse. The tracks are laid. The cards are played. Everywhere you look, it's man made. Man made, man made. Take a look around. It's man made. An old man sighs. A young girl cries. Just listen to the lies. We shoot fireworks in the sky While poor children die Do you wonder why It's man-made 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 Take a look around Cut the trees all down To build a little town With lights that shine all night It's man-made We drill into the ground So we can drive around And run somebody down Poison in the air Poison on the ground Poison everywhere Man made Man made Man made Take a look around On your way to church to sleep You pass the helpless on the street Turn and look the other way It's man-made I swear to you With right hand I I will not lie it's man-made People on the street Watch a shiny limousine Another gift to God It's man-made Man-made People too dark People too light People too wrong People too right It's man-made Man-made Open up 
open up your eyes It's man-made Social grace With a plastic face Running the wrong way In the human race It's man-made Before it all comes down, we can turn it all around. A smile and not a frown. It's man made. Man made. Man made. Take a look around. Uh-huh.